بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله I wanted to speak about something which is very important for us to have an understanding of and this is Amr bin Maruf and Nahil al-Munkar commanding the good and forbidding the evil which is one of the greatest uh, duties for the Muslim and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has praised it through the Quran and praised those who command to the good and forbid the evil and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spoken with and threatened with a severe punishment those people who do not command the good and forbid the evil and those who do not practice what they preach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says do you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says do you command the people to the good to, to the good to the piety and fusikum and forget yourselves. kitab and you read the book, meaning that you have ilm, you have knowledge, you have fiqh bi Allah. Afala ta'kilun, don't you think? Because a thinking person is going to practice what they preach because they know that it's true. They know that the punishment of not doing the good is true and the punishment of doing the sin is true and the reward for doing the good is true and along with this great duty of commanding to the good and forbid the evil we must know that there are kawaii, there's principles and this is where so many of the people go wrong that have, these are people mutadayinin, these are the people who are trying to be strong in, the, in their practice of the religion and one of the examples, for example, we have with the contemporary, the, even the uh, from the classical time, from the the the, the uh, era, uh, the era of the Sahaba, رضي الله تعالى عنهم أجمعين, the Khawarij appeared, and the Khawarij they they commanded the good, they tried to command the good anyway. Their intention, they had a sahihnia bi'idnillah to command the good and forbid the evil. But what they had halu, they were extreme to such an extent that they, because of their naqs and knowledge, their, their, their little knowledge that they had, and their negating the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, that they tried to command good and they ended up making takfir, what was the nahaya, what was the, the natija or the result by their concept of commanding good, is that they made takfir of the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. And this is not just a khafa, this is, <laughs> this is a, a great facade. And this is a, 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 a kufr because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised them in the Qur'an. So this was a going against the Qur'an. And it was a great evil, even though they intended good. My point is this, for example, we have so many youth. This is another example. In this contemporary time, they want to do good. They go to Syria, they go to Iraq, they go to Afghanistan. And they believe that they're making jihad fi sabilillah. Even I believe those groups like Al-Shabaab and Boko Haram, they want perhaps, you know, some of them anyway, some of them we could probably honestly say, some of those youth, when they leave their countries, they want good. But they end up doing great evil, thinking that they're commanding the good and forbidding the evil, when in fact, they are commanding the evil and abandoning the good. And this they do through suicide bombings, they do it through causing chaos and folda around the earth. They used to do it fil Allah mentions them the hypocrites. And Surah Al Baqarah, he speaks about them, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that they uh, that they go they used to do it fil uh, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the in, in the beginning of Baqarah about the Munafikin, that they they wanted to, uh, they said they're, uh, you know, we, verily we are the Muslim. We are the, the ones who rectify things. Isn't this what we hear from the youth of ISIS? And we hear from the youth that they're practicing the Sharia. They're ruling by the Sharia. This is what they say. They're making tahkim of the Sharia. They say this. So this is their claim. And perhaps some of them, this is their intention. 
But what do they do in, the, in trying to do that? They do so much great evil. They cut the necks of the innocent and they uh, destroy everything living. They do suicide bombings. They uh, say that there's maslaha in this, that there's rectification, but in fact, there's only a spreading of evil throughout the earth without going into the details that many of the people do. So this was a characteristic of the hypocrites, is that even they wanted to do good, but their natija, their result was evil. That's because of a lack of faham. There's a lack of understanding of the deen. The Prophet ﷺ said, Man Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives them an understanding of the religion. The Khawarij were not granted with this fiqh. Likewise, Jama'at takfir wa Hijra were not granted with this fiqh. Likewise, Ab uh, Abu Bakr al Baghdadi and all these other criminals of this time are not granted that fiqh. Allah didn't give them fiqh. It doesn't matter if he grew, grew, went through a Sharia college or this and this. Fiqh, understanding of the religion, was not present because of the way they tried to practice and force and uh, terror, terrorize humanity. That wasn't from fiqh. That wasn't from deen. It wasn't from Islam. And this was the, the way of the original Khawarij. They thought they were doing good. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned that if you saw their salat, and this was to the Sahaba, تعالى, the Prophet ﷺ was describing the Khawarij. If you see your salat, salat and your fasting to their fasting, you would think you, it was nothing. Meaning that they were very stern in their ibadah. They were very, uh, very, they had zeal and they were doing their ibadah. They loved the law. But they didn't have tawfiq in the sunnah. Because with all of our worship, we have to have ikhlas and we have to have mutaba. We have to have sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is tawheed. And we have to have mutaba, meaning we follow the Prophet wasallam, that, that we're doing this act of worship like the Prophet wasallam. And this is what the Khawarij didn't have. And this is what these modern day takfiri, jihadi groups, they don't have. The Prophet وسلم, said uh, in the hadith of uh, Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu ta'ala anhu collected in Sahih Muslim مَنْ رَاءَ مِنْكُمْ مُنْكَرًا فَلَيْ غَيْرُهُ بِيَدْ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعِفَ بِلِسَانِهِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعِفَ بِقَلْبِهِ وَذَلَكَ عَدَوْ فَالْإِمَانِ رواه Muslim The Prophet وسلم, said مَنْ رَاءَ مِنْكُمْ مُنْكَرًا Whoever amongst you sees something evil then change it with his hands. Then, فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ If he's unable to do, then with his uh, tongue, meaning speak out against it. فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ And if he's unable to do that, then with his heart. Hating it in his heart. وَذَلِكَ أَدْعُ man. And that's the weakest form of faith, the Prophet ﷺ said. A fayda, a benefit we gain from this, Habatifillah, is it shows us uh, that there are maratib of iman, that there's different levels of iman, and that iman also fluctuates, and that iman is comprised of the heart, statements of the tongue, and actions. All of those make up iman in Islam. That's what faith is in Islam. So the Muslim who doesn't practice and says, you don't know what's in my heart, we may not be able to open their heart and know exactly what's in their heart, but you know things are wrong in their heart if there's no manifestation on their limbs, if they're not practicing. Along with this Ahabatifillah, something very important is that we understand that it takes ilm wa fiqh, that part of the part of da'wah and calling people to good is having knowledge of what is the truth and knowledge of what is not the truth. So knowledge of what you command to, which is good, and knowledge of the shar of what you are forbidding. You have to have knowledge about that. Al, otherwise, how can you command to the good if you don't know what good is? How can you, you forbid the evil if you don't know what evil is properly? Likewise, you have to have fiqh and knowing the mukhalifin, of knowing the people who you're commanding the good and forbidding the evil. You should have some knowledge about those people. You should have some knowledge about their, their perhaps their culture and, and who you're calling to. This is one of the characteristics of the good da'i, the person calling to, uh, to, 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 to da'wah in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincerity, that they have an idea about those people they are talking to, that they are addressing, to call them to good and forbid them from evil. 
The person who doesn't have this is nux, is, 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 has shortcomings in their dawah, and perhaps they can cause more harm than good. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah wrote extensively about this in his Mejmu al-Fatawa. Uh, one example is, there is it's a famous uh, narration, if you will, in Mejmu al-Fatawa. Shaykh al-Islam was asked about some, I think it was some Mongols, uh, the Tartar or what have you, who were, uh, they were drinking alcohol and they were killing Muslims. They were causing so much harm, you know, to the Muslim Ummah. And the Muslims were scared and they were weak. And the Tartars had so much power. Some of them were drinking alcohol. And one of the students said, yeah, you know, Shaykh al-Islam, why, why don't you command the good and forbid the evil? And he mentioned that if he were to, or in this situation, if it were to be, you tell these people who are doing great evil to stop drinking, for example, which is evil, and it's good to stop this munkar. Then they would focus more on killing and killing the Muslims, showing that he taqaddam al-maslah or masalih ala mufasid. This is very important, that we look at the harms and benefits. How can you know the harms and benefits? Only with ilm. It's only through talab al-ilm. That's why we need ilm. Ahabat tafillah, and I always try to call the people talab al-ilm. Don't think that these people tell you just to go run in jihad and you don't know anything about Islam. Go, go, go. You know, join this his, join this group. These are groups, these aren't uh, a balad. It's not, there's no khalifa, there's no leader, there's no imam. You didn't get permission from walidain. All these mukhalifat. How, how can you expect help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do higher duties? And you joined his via. You can't expect that. So, again, knowing the masala and the mufasid, knowing the harms and the benefits. Let's uh, take a look, and I don't want to take too much time. One of the benefits with this, uh, Sheikh Ubaid ibn Abdullah Jabri, Hafidullah Ta'ala, he mentioned a faida in his explanation of a, a very important text from Sheikh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah about commanding the good and the, the forbidden the evil. He said, Al Amr bil ma'roof wa nahi an al munkar, laysat luhu a maslaha fi had al amr li thatihi, an li that nafsihi, wa inna hadafahu wa gharadahu, an yukun al nas salihin muslihin, muhtadin il al haq qawlin wa amalin wa very beautiful ibarah. Commanding the good and forbidding the evil, it is not from rectification or it is not from the benefit of doing this great act of ibadah that you just do it just for the sake of it, of doing it. But in fact, he said, rather, its purpose, this is why this is ilm. This is knowing the muqasid of the shari sharia, the intent, the purpose of these hukum, the illa. These are important, the reason for the things are mishroor. We don't just fight and, and do these issues, acts of ibadah, just because, yeah, I'm just going to do that. There's no purpose for it. Nah, there's acts of ibadah. Some of them are for a, 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 a greater purpose. It has to be fi sabilillah. Man qatil li tukun kalimatullahi uliya huwa fi sabilillah azza wa jal. So the intention has to be there. And it is a, a means to something greater. It's a means to establish tawheed. So what the Shaykh said, that in and of itself, it's, it's not uh, the purpose. The intent is to make the people, to rectify the people and, and, and to have them rectify and to have them guided. So you're commanding the good and forbidding the evil, not to be stern, not to be harsh, but you're trying to help this person, encourage this person to change their behavior. Muhtadin al haq to change them, to, to guide them to the truth. That's your point. When we refute Ahl al-Bid'ah, if we're talking about Yas Qadir, we're talking about uh, Nu'man Ali Khan, if we're talking about uh, uh, the Sufi uh, in California, uh, Zaytuna Institute people. We're talking about this one, we're talking about this one. It's not to belittle them, it's not to destroy them, but we want good for them in fact. A part of that is wanting good because they're Muslim. We want them to leave dhulamat to nur, we want them to leave darkness to light, to leave bid'ah to sunnah. Because all of those people have great followings. We would love to see them call into the sunnah and have all those people following with them. Follow to the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi That's what we want. We don't want, it's not just for the sake of, I wanted to refute him because I, it made me better. It made me cooler. It made me uh, seem like an alam. It made me accepted with these brothers. Nah. 
That's not the purpose. The intent, there's a gharad. It's for hidayah, as the Shaykh Ubaid ibn Abdullah Jabri, Hafidullah Ta'ala mentioned. He said, Muhtadeen al haq qawlin wa amalan wa i'tiqadin. To guide them to the truth with, uh, in their statements, in their deeds, and their i'tiqad, and in their belief, correct? In their belief. This is the purpose. This is the purpose, walillah alhamd. I want to end by saying something. In another hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's a hadith, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's a story of uh, uh, Abi, uh, uh, of uh, Ibn Ubay Ibn Sulul. He was one of the head of the hypocrites in Medina. Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala wanted to have his head because they, this guy was a known hypocrite. And he asked the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Ya Rasulullah, can I have this munafiq's head? Can I take his head? Because he's a hypocrite in the deen of Allah. He's deceiving the mu'mineen. His plots are against the believers. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is from fiqh fi deen. This is our guidance. He's, he's, our, he's the one we, we follow. The sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, his wisdom in commanding the good and forbidding the evil. The Prophet ﷺ, they all knew this guy was a munafiq. He said, la. يَتَحَدَّثَ النَّاسِ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدْ يَقْتُلَ أَصْحَابَهُ The people will say that Muhammad killed his, his companions. This is from wisdom. That even though this person is a hypocrite who will be in the lowest depths of the hellfire, it was not befitting that the Prophet ﷺ commanded his companions to kill this because the people would believe that, that that guy was a companion of the Prophet ﷺ because he knew the Prophet ﷺ. So the people would say, huh, he's killing his own companions. Look at ISIS in these groups. They kill their own people. They have suspicion. Those groups, when you get to that level of Hezbiya, they kill when they suspect you. If you're in Hezbiya in, in the West and in other places, they're not going to kill you and probably not physically harm you, but their Hezbiya gets so strong, they will uh, attack you in every which way because you're not with them. And you don't agree 100% with them and agree with their sheikh, agree with their, their talib al ilm You don't make hajr of him like we want you to. We saw you walking with him. You're, you're off it. You're off the minhaj. Either openly make a bayan and, and talk about this person or you're hit. We'll make hajr of you. Is this from the sunnah of the Prophet To Is this part of commanding the good and forbidding the evil? Is this looking at the masala and the mufasid? So the point being here, as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah and the ulama of Islam mentioned, is looking at the masala and the mufasid. That's just one of the kawaid from the, that's one of the uh, kawaid. One qaida from the kawaid. This is one principle from amongst the many principles in uh, usul of fiqh and in kawaid fiqhia. When you're looking at these principles like looking at the harms and benefits. Another example of habit al this, oh, this happens very often. I know people, they want to command the good and forbid the evil. So then they will openly, in a group with the people, maybe people who are soft-hearted, people who don't even know any better, but they will command the good. Ah, oh, say things to embarrass them. Say things to belittle them. That's not from the sunnah. And they don't get, they, la yatahakkik al-mas'ala. They don't, or the gharad. They don't even get the end result that they're trying to achieve. They don't get the benefit at all. They didn't command the good and forbid the evil. Instead, they were harsh. They looked like an idiot. They bid little of themselves. And the munkar, if it was munkar in fact, still continues. Because they didn't use hikmah. There was no wisdom. Edu uh, 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 you know, a uh, call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with mu'ad, hasana. You know, and, 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 and with basira. We, we should have insight in hikmah. We should have knowledge. And we should be gentle. For asal and da'wah, if you look at what the ulama say, if you look at what Quran and Sunnah, let's go first, before we look at the ulama, let's look to the Prophet wasallam, who is the one, Allah wa Rasul. We're supposed to follow the Messenger, and follow, the, uh, follow Allah and follow the Rasul wasallam. Allah commands us all throughout the Quran to be you know, gentle. And the Prophet ﷺ commanded us to be gentle and have good manners. The Prophet ﷺ said, There isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of a believer than good manners. And, and verily, Allah hates wicked and sinful speech. The Prophet ﷺ said that there, uh, there isn't a thing that is achieved 
uh, you know, that, that's achieved properly except through uh, rifq, except through being gentle. Okay, so gentleness gives you the natija, it gives you the, uh, the positive good results. So if you want to command the good and forbid the evil, the asl in general is, is, is being gentle. People accept gentleness. If, there's a, if it requires, so the, 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 the most important thing is, is having the masala and the mafasid, looking at the harms and the benefit, having knowledge to, and, and hikmah to know when to be stronger or to be stern and know when to be gentle. So we have to know and understand that. So if you're in a gathering of people and you say, you, you ask a question to belittle the people, which maybe it's trying to encourage the people to good. That's not, it's not permissible and you're not achieving the, the ends. The ends is you want to give the people guidance. You want the people to change their behavior to something good. Or you, you, you yell at the people or you curse the people. Have you achieved it? If I go to Jamaat uh, Tablik and I see them in my masjid or you know any of the communities and I stand up in the middle of their speech ah oh, mubtadi'a this is bid'a this person is off it you know speaking about them we know their jama'at the asl of his bid'a mubtadi'in most of the people who are with them are juhal they, they are ignorant of the religion a lot of times they take new muslims and they make bayan but who has done the good, commanded the good and forbid, forbid the evil, forbid, forbade the evil. If the person stands up, even if he's a da'i of the sunnah, and he stands up and he calls this new Muslim who's making bayan to the people, starts saying, be quiet, uh, you're a mubtadi'ah, this and this and this, in front of all the people. Did he make the sunnah look good? Are the people going to learn from that lesson that this is beneficial? So that's the point. The habit of Allah is learning. If you're truly truthful that you want good for your Muslim brother and sister and for whoever, and you want to command the good and forbid the evil, check your intention and do it with, and do it with kindness, generally. Generally, we do it with kindness and hikmah. Hikmah is very important to know when. Maybe it's better to do it in private. Like when the ulama, they mention, and this comes from the Salaf, that the leader, when he's making a mistake, you don't go make a YouTube video. You don't go uh, on the minbar and speak about the ulama and speak about the, the leaders. But instead, they should be addressed through the proper channel behind closed doors. Sirri. You know, holding their hand. Take them by the hand with gentleness. Why? Because that's the asl. It's the rifq in the lean. The Prophet ﷺ spoke. This was the son of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is what the ulama of Islam has left behind us. Yes, there's a time for sternness. But this comes from knowing the masali and the mafasid. When we do many things in the religion, making hajr from people, making whatever, it's looking at the harms and the benefits. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Bless us with ilm and nafir, uskan tayyibu, ilm and mutaqabbilin. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with a happy Eid. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam.